doing folks another week is here monday it's monday let's get to it those of you who have followed me for a few years will be excited that karen has now joined us once again to boss me around and act like i don't know what i'm doing so this weekend was kind of interesting uh we had a driver who broke down in sock center minnesota and the load was going down to virginia and had to be there for monday and so I was called up uh, to ask if I could cover it. And I said, yeah, sure. Uh, they were gonna put me in truck 3105. I had all my stuff moved in already. It was gonna be a lot of fun. We were gonna head down to Virginia and back. It would have been about a week trip. I was really excited about it. And uh, just as I was ready to leave here, I just moved all my chains and my equipment over to the truck. And I was about to roll out of the yard here. I was gonna bobtail down there and recover the trailer in Minnesota and continue on down to Virginia with it. Uh, and then uh, when we got there, or when we were just about to leave, they called up and said, wait, 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 no, we got the truck going. I guess they got it into a shop and they fixed it. It was a coolant leak of some sort, uh, which needed a very specific part to, to be fixed. So they didn't think they could fix it. That's why I was on my way down there. We were gonna go to Virginia. It was gonna be really fun. Turns out no Virginia for us. I, I, was, I was kind of excited because I got friends that live down in Virginia, Moses and Colleen, and uh, I was hoping that I'd maybe be able to run into them while I was down there. That would have been kind of cool. Moses was a groomsman in my uh, in my wedding. So that was kind of a bummer. But in the process of getting everything uh, moved into the truck, of course, I was going to take Karen, my GPS, with me. Oh, I forgot to... Ah, boy, this plug isn't working very well here right now. Oh, yeah, since I had it here at work already, and I had to move all my stuff back into this truck to be ready for Monday today, I love my GPS here. I mean, you know what? It'd be nice to have some company on the road. I missed being bossed around by Karen. She was an integral part of the vlog for many years. Well, first we had Mandy, and then Mandy retired and we got Karen. Uh, so, uh, we'll see how this goes. <laughs> there we go. I don't know how loud her volume is. I probably turned her off. I don't know. Volume's all the way up. All right, so uh, let's give this a shot. I almost forget what it's like working with her. I hope I won't regret this. First assignment of the day, trailer 518, that's this right here. Tarp load of lumber I'm going into Winnipeg, just down the road in the city. So I gotta go there, take the tarps off, roll them up, organize all the equipment, bring it back and set it aside for the driver that it belongs to. Nice and easy. Come on. Come on. There it is. Alright, so I tied this front flap down right over the trailer number. Good thing we have the trailer number on the side we can double check make sure this is actually 518 it says 518 over there so there's three tarps on this i'm not too sure what kind of wood is underneath it i just know it's lumber but if it's tarped it's probably uh fancy lumber it's definitely lumber that wasn't supposed to get all dirty on the road very often they get us to tarp these loads just so that the road salt and road grime doesn't get onto the product uh, in the winter time and since it's getting colder and it's already snowing up in the mountains out west could be why and other wood is just really fine finishing wood it's expensive lumber and it can't get wet or uh or dirty well you get it tarps it's pretty self-explanatory what tarps are for Signals, brake lights, marker lights all working. License plate light working. Tires, mud flap are in place. It does have tires, that's great. And bonus, they're all filled with compressed air. That's awesome. It's the way I like them. I like them better that way. They work better that way. Uh, you've got premium winter air in there because it is getting colder and you can tell that it's winter air by the way that they are. Marker light, signal light. I'm just kidding about the winter air. 
I always have to say that because there's some people that believe me when I say that you have to change the air in your tires in winter. I mean, you can do that if you want to, but you don't have to. You just sort of have to adjust the pressure sometimes. But all good, all good. I don't blame you. I mean, crazier things are true, right? than to the sounds of my people. But no, people frown on that. I can get a ticket. So I guess they'll just have to be satisfied with me just silently rolling past them. Pipes are still kind of loud when I take off though. somebody who's done that. We call that lane diving. Diving from the left lane. Oh, there's my exit. Diving across three lanes of traffic to get to the exit. I'm on, let's go. Weird 
being in the left lane. In 600 meters, turn right on Inkster Boulevard, RDE 25. How about no? You crazy Dutch woman. Okay, buddy, you don't need to take it so wide to turn left. That's one thing. Karen! Karen! She's persistent. I was gonna say, you know, when people turn into the left turn lanes here, they often think that they're pulling a trailer in their little car and think that they gotta cut into this lane to turn left. Make it, take it wide, you know, get that imaginary trailer around the corner. Karen, stop it, I'm not turning. Why would I go that way? This is a perfectly good truck route. It's like half the length. Recalculating, yeah, you rethink that, Karen. Now she wants me to turn on Burroughs. Why? She wants me to turn on Burroughs, go over to Route 90, go south down to Logan, and come back to McPhillips. This same road. Why not just stay on McPhillips? In one kilometer, turn right on Burroughs Avenue. How about new? Oh, oh, okay, okay, you're not gonna give me enough space to get by you, eh? Alright. You can really feel the weight behind me that it doesn't want to move. And once you get it going, it doesn't want to stop. Turn right on. I'm not turning right on Burroughs, Karen. You have been wrong over and over. It's your first day. I think she's going to get fired. Then again, I like the company. You know, someone to talk to. I mean, I talk to you guys. Turn right on. Burroughs, I do. But she's always arguing with me, see? She's always bossing me around. Thinks she owns the place. First day back at work. Gives me something to complain about, right? I haven't seen a lot of complaining about my complaining in my comment section, so I'm trying to complain more to give the complainer something to complain about because I'm complaining. You think it's gonna work? Oh, I get why she's trying to get me to go around now. Okay, okay, maybe I shouldn't have gotten so mad at her so quick. She thinks there's a low bridge ahead. Telling me there's a low bridge ahead, and she would have been right. But I need to update her because they've made this bridge uh, higher recently that we can get under there now. She doesn't know that yet. Okay, Karen, you're off the hook for today. Warning for the clearance violation. See, she thinks that I'm going to hit the bridge up ahead. Warning, bridge clearance. She's trying to tell me that there's a low bridge. It's just up here. Everybody knows the McPhillips Bridge in Winnipeg. They've recently dug it out deeper. That's right where the train is going up ahead there. We've got to go under the train. It used to be 3.9 meters and our trucks are 4.2 meters. But if you lived in Winnipeg and knew what you were doing, you knew that you could actually get a truck under there. It, it's, they said it was lower than it was, but that was on purpose. You could just barely get underneath there. But recently they've dug it out deeper so that we can get underneath there. It's now I think 4.3 meters or something like that. We'll see once we get there. She thinks I'm going to hit this bridge. Not true, Karen. Not true. But that's not your fault. I haven't updated you yet. That's my fault. Okay, the whole time I'm getting mad at her. And it was my fault. That's terrible. I'm going to show you guys this bridge. Oh, it says 4.2 meters. So it's exactly enough for a truck to get under. 4.2 meters is 13 foot 6. See? No problem. You see, Karen? You could have just trusted me. I know what I'm doing. But that's not her fault. Not her fault. Alright, alright. 
Now she canceled the road. She forgot what she was doing. She got so scared. Oh, now I gotta tell her what to do again. No legal road can be found. Okay, Karen. I know where I'm going. No thanks to her. Just up here, we gotta turn left onto Elgin Avenue. Is it this one? Where is it? No, it's after the train tracks, right? Yeah, after the train tracks. Right after. And I guess Karen doesn't know. Next left onto Elgin Avenue. I have to use Google. Google knows where to go, but Karen doesn't know. Karen probably doesn't know that this is a truck route because it doesn't really look like one. One second. Oh, this is inconvenient. This guy's going to block traffic there, but I can't get through until all those people go past. Alright, here we go. Right after that car goes. was too intense for Karen. She didn't want to do it. Yeah, I've just got to park up ahead here. See, there's another truck right there. This is a truck road. How else do we get to our customer here? Karen just, she didn't have the stomach for it, I guess. Park right here. There's a sign that says I can park here for one hour. I'm gonna shake up the whole thing. I'm gonna call them and ask them where they want me. I think they're gonna want me to turn left down this road there, right where that truck is facing. That's why I'm gonna stop here and call in and make sure. So the moral of the story is clean your camera lens. Was that dirty the whole time? I'm sorry guys, oh, I'm gonna have to really. Oh no. One second, one second, I'll clean you up. Is that better? It's hard to tell. Sorry, was, were you guys staring at my fingerprints? There's a fingerprint on there. Was that dirty the whole time? I'm sorry, man, I hate it when that happens. It ruins all the footage, but I've gotta use it anyways because it was a good story. And the moral of the story, let me click you back in here. Remember, the moral of the story is do not trust your GPS at all. Ever always double check their work. And if you ever come to Winnipeg, Manitoba, in Canada here, definitely don't trust your GPS at all. At all. All right, ask a local. We'll tell you how to get there. <laughs> Pretty much take the perimeter to your closest access point and then go in from there. Okay, so I've got my uh, paperwork out here. This lumber came from British Columbia, so I'm just gonna give them a call real quick here and uh, let them know we're here. As soon as I can figure out where their phone number is. They don't always give the phone number. Uh, there's no phone number in here, I'll have to Google it. Can't find the phone number of your customer. It's pretty easy. You just go into Google Maps and uh, I have it right here. It should give you a phone number. Here we go. I'm going to give them a call. Let them know I'm here. Ask where they want me. Hi, uh, my name's Josh. I'm a driver with Keystone Western. And I just arrived here. I'm on the street close to your uh, location. I have a load of lumber from British Columbia for you. It's under a tarp. I'm just wondering where you would like me to go with this. I know you guys have a separate yard across the street. And Okay, I'll go and take a look. Okay, thank you. Bye. Okay, so I called in. Obviously, I got their front desk. And what they told me to do is park on the street, just like I am right now, and walk over and find their shipper out in their yard. So I'm going to go walk over there and leave you guys here, if that's all right, and uh, figure out where he wants me. They have a, they have a, a yard on one side of the street, and they also have a second yard on this side. I just need to know which one they want me in and then uh, let them know I'm here. I was right. I'm going to be unloading just to the right here. Uh, they just got to clear the driveway for me and I'll be right there. Right off in the back corner where I belong. Seems 
everybody puts me in the back corner. <laughs> center myself in this area here. And then take my straps and my tarps off and then go get them when I'm ready. Really nice guy here. I haven't seen him before, but nice guy. So I'm sort of off on my own back here. Putting my hand out here, I can feel it's pretty windy already. And it's going to make it really fun for rolling up the tarps. So I'll spare you watching me, you know, mumble and whatever else I do under my breath while I'm trying to roll these things up. And I'll talk to you after. I'll show you the load here. It might be a little windy. Just watch out for the wind noise. It's not too bad. I'm going to quickly get this done so they can get me unloaded. And the wind is coming from that direction there, so I'll probably roll my tarps up on that side and the truck will sort of block the wind. Rolling up tarps in the wind. Good times. Good times. I want to show you what was underneath those tarps. And uh, I've got these tarps all rolled up now. The wind did not help. The wind picked up just as I started rolling the first one. So. It was a nice day playing with very big heavy kites. Yes, but we got them rolled up. With a lot of things said that shouldn't be repeated on YouTube. But there they are, all neatly rolled up. I want to show you what was underneath the tarps now. There's all my straps I got to roll up. It is fancy lumber. It smells so good. I wish I could share the smell with you. It smells so good. Got to keep you out of the wind here now. That's why I'm backing up. The wind is coming from behind me. So on the back here, this is a couple of different types of wood, but on the back here you can see it's uh, you know, it's the kind of wood that you don't want to get wet. I don't know if you call it finishing wood or what. But came from our west coast here in Canada. This is Canadian lumber, western red cedar back here and this is a uh, well, product of Canada I'm not sure what's underneath there but you can sort of see it up there a little bit yeah that's what was under the tarps and uh, my compliments to the driver who tarped this because holy smokes man did you spend like 10 hours tarping this down now I mean this as a compliment okay I mean this as a compliment that was the most elaborate elaborate detailed tarp job I've ever seen in my life and I've seen a lot of tarp jobs the attention to detail and the amount of equipment that was used and bungees and this way and that way and that way and this way this is over that and that's over that like wow I'm actually impressed I'm not even mad I'm impressed that took a long time to take apart that was a work of art it's, my, it's a compliment to the driver you went over above and beyond most people would call it severe overkill, but you did a good job. I appreciate your artwork. And that's it. It's all over there. Bring these. Uh, I'm gonna bring these tarps back to wherever they belong to, along with all their straps. I got them in my compartment down there. Another mission complete. And that's it guys, that's the conversation for today. Don't trust your GPS. What I'd like to hear from you though in the comments section, down below, have you ever trusted your GPS and had that get you into a tight spot? If you ever followed your GPS down somewhere, you probably shouldn't have followed your GPS down in a truck. How about in a car? What are some of your best GPS fail stories, I'd love to hear. Zip it up so it doesn't fall out.
still, I'm still like blown away by that tarp job. Who, who does that? <laughs> you could have sent that thing into space. I don't know what you'd need a tarp for in space, but hey, it'd be ready. It was ready for anything. <laughs> Not a drop of water would have gotten under that tarp. I always say it's better to be to, to overkill than to uh, put too little securement on, right? That tarp was definitely not moving, not even one millimeter. Very impressed. Someone took a lot of time and a lot of care into doing that and doing a good job at that. Anyways, I'm gonna head home now. Tomorrow's another day. We'll find something else to talk about tomorrow.